Hi everyone, my name is Tom Polin, and I've been a user of the Deltek Acumen Suite since 2010. Today, ClearPlan Consulting is bringing you this video, how to get started with Deltek Acumen Fuse. What I'm showing you today are three very useful capabilities in Acumen that you can use on your very first day with the software for your real projects. Fuse is designed to bring you results quickly. So today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. This video will be helpful to new users of the software, experienced users who want to retrace some of the basics, or maybe you're considering the software and want to see more about how it works. In just a moment, we'll be in the software and I'll show you the exact steps to bring in a project from any number of tools and start analyzing those projects right away. We'll cover three key areas. Number one, importing a project and quickly diagnosing potential issues. And we'll drill down into specific areas with a capability called slice and dice. Two, next, we'll deeply analyze the project's logic and I'll show you how to instantly trace a driving path to any activity or milestone in the schedule. Number three, finally, I'll show you how to use forensics. This is an immediate comparison between any two or more versions of your schedule. We'll see how to do that and talk about why it's helpful in a number of situations. We'll work quickly today, so let's jump right into the software. And anytime you open the software, you'll get started on the S1 Projects screen. And on the S1 project screen, at least for today, we're only going to use this to open schedules. There's other things you can do here, but we're not gonna worry about them right now. Uh, you've got a number of different schedule tools to choose from. I'm gonna choose one of the sample projects that comes with the software that you can experiment with. And I will just navigate there. And for now, we'll just use the one called initial plan. Tell it our language option and then import all projects. What you can do is you can stage a number of projects when you're more advanced with the tool, and then you can import them all at once. Let's go right over to the S2 diagnostic screen and see what we have. Click that blue fuse button up here. We'll drag this over just a little bit. And I've got a bit of bad news, and this is intentional in the sample file. There's 11 missing logic items. There's hard constraints. There's negative float in an unstatused new plan. Uh, there's 30 activities with lags out of only about 50 some in the project. In fact, the overall score is 26. That means only 26% of the activities in this schedule pass these first nine metrics. Anytime you see something on this screen and really all across Acumen Fuse, it never hurts just to click on it and see what you get. In this case, it's showing us the 11 missing logic items down in the lower right area of the screen. This is real information that helps us start tracking down the problems in the schedule that are giving us the yellow and green in so many different areas. And just like that, you can see what the negative float items are. You can see some of the various fields down here. We'll even run this to a report in just a minute, but there's a few things that I do want to do first. Uh, for one, I do want to let you know that there's a number of different metric categories in the software. More advanced users can group, easily group, metrics into categories of their own, and more advanced users can write their own metrics as well. All of the metrics you see here in the software, and there's hundreds, were written in the same metric editor that your users can have access to. Now, before we look at more metrics, let's do what we call a slice and dice. So what I'm going to do, I have a field for control account manager in this schedule called CAM. Sort by or group by that and then click the fuse button. And you can see I have Jane, Jim, and Terry. There's only three CAMs or control account managers on this project. And you can see now on the right hand side, the information is broken out by CAM. Jane, for example, has eight missing logic items out of the 11. Let's click on the eight. And I can quickly have a conversation with Jane and talk about these items and maybe where and why they should be linked in the schedule since they're not. Same goes with hard constraints, negative float. I'll apply this slice to all of the metric groups. And let's go over and look at float. Click that blue fuse button. 
And just looking at Jane's ribbon here, 11 critical activities, 12 non-critical, one with negative float. We can click there, see which one it is. Only one day of negative float, but it's still negative. None with zero to 20, none with 20 to 30. And a surprisingly high number with more than 30 days of float. But remember, Jane's activities have a lot of missing logic. I suspect that if we were to fix the missing logic right now, we would see the high float come down. It's just a suspicion, but it's an educated guess. Now, another thing we can do is we can double click on Jane's name and then select a different field. And we happen to have one in the schedule called location. Jane's activities, let's see how many locations. They just cover two locations, domestic and offshore. And let's go back over to, uh, let's apply to all, let's go over to schedule quality. Okay, so seven missing logic items in the domestic location, which actually kicks off the project. And then one later on, one hard constraint on domestic, one negative float. I realize I'm working quickly here, but I want to show you how quickly you can really play detective and drill into a schedule to see what it's made of, whether it's your own schedule or one you're analyzing, or maybe even one that you haven't seen before. You can very quickly use the fields that are in the schedule, so become familiar with them. And like the cam and location field here, I'm leveraging those to drill down into the information really to see where the first, earliest, most severe issues are in this schedule. So let's go back up to the top. In fact, there's a very handy button called Reset Display right here that brings us back. So now we're in this single ribbon for the whole project. Remember, there's that 26%. There's all the issues. We can click on any of these. Uh, boxes. Uh, while we're here, um, I will let you know, if you're not sure about a term like logic density, that's the average number of links per activity, just hover the mouse over there. Like I said earlier, it never hurts to click on something in Acumen, and it never hurts to hover your mouse over something that you're not sure about, and you very well might just get an explanation and more information about what the metric means. Let's do this. Let's slice by cam again. And let's run a couple of reports. It's one thing to use Acumen dynamically, and I absolutely love doing that. It's another thing when you need to inform someone asynchronously so they can look at it later. Now, you can take screenshots and other things, but there are a couple very handy reports that you can run that will help people understand what's going on in a schedule that they're accountable for. Number one is the executive briefing, and this is one of the most popular reports in Fuse. It's a Microsoft Word document. And because I sliced my screen by cam, it is going to run the report. I'll scroll down to this area here where it's written out with an explanation of where the different things that you sliced by, in this case, the cam, how they're performing on these schedule quality metrics or any metrics that you happened to pull up onto the screen, whether that's out of the box metric groups, like a couple of the ones that we looked at, or whether it's your own combinations that intermediate and more advanced users tend to put together on their own. None of it is very difficult. I just don't want you doing any of that yet until you've done some of the basics like we're doing here. So here's a section for Jim Smith. It talks about the highs and lows of quality for Jim Smith. And then finally, it wraps up the report with Terry Jones. There's another report called the Analyst Report, which will now also be grouped by CAM because I grouped by CAM in Acumen. We're in Excel this time. Here's basically an Excel snapshot of all those same metric results by CAM. And then each cam gets a tab. And then within that tab, they get the list of activities that don't meet the quality metrics that we had up on the screen in Acumen. And you can expand and collapse those lists. You can send this to the individual responsible for the work. And they can review the schedule much the same way that you did in Acumen, 
but they're just using Excel. They don't need to learn Acumen. It's good that you know it so that you can get the information together for them and they can just see what counts. The results that they need to improve the quality of the schedule. Anytime you're practicing your skills on that S2 diagnostic screen, you're getting better and more efficient with the software. There's never a bad time to open your latest schedule update poke and prod it with some of the various metrics and do some slicing and dicing. Even when you see red, don't panic. That's Acumen's way of telling you that this schedule looks different than Acumen expects from a top quality schedule. The key is to focus in on those red and yellow areas and make a decision. Are you comfortable with how it is or do you think Acumen's guidance may drive you towards making some changes? Acumen won't make those decisions for you, but it can help make those decisions easier. Now on to schedule logic checks. When it comes to evaluating schedule logic, you can do it so quickly in Acumen, the real risk becomes making sure you don't try to look at too much information all at once. Now I'm in the S2 logic tab in Dell Tech Acumen Fuse, and you can see there's a number of different things you can check for all across the top. I'm not gonna click on all of these, but I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorites. I know a lot of people who've been planning for a long time definitely wanna find out if there's any start to finish relationships, and I'm pleased to report on this schedule there are none. Uh, we rely on uh, finish to start in 86% of the relationships. And then let's see, finish to finish is 5% and start to start is 8%. That's not bad. We really like to see 90% or higher finish to start relationships. We're pretty close to that here. Now we do have some missing logic and maybe when we fill in some of that missing logic at a later time, um, that'll bring our finish to start count up even higher. Um, you can look at lags and leads. Now there's checks for this in S2 Diagnostics, but this goes down to the individual relationship level on this screen, not just activities with lags, but the individual relationships, which can be more than one per activity. Up circular logic, hopefully this would have been caught in the scheduling tool, but you can e export a schedule in some scheduling tools if it does have circular logic. So be careful that someone didn't send one to you. Open ends, we can see on the diagnostic screen as well as here logic on summaries, out of sequence. Two of my favorites to check for are called open starts and open finishes. In fact, some people call these dangling activities. Uh, an open start means the only six, uh, predecessor to a task is based on the finish, like a finish to finish predecessor. So nothing's driving the start. Open finishes is the opposite. It's activities that have a successor but the only successor or successors are start to start. So nothing's tied to the finish of the activity that has the successor. Now there's a few other options here that I haven't clicked on, but one that I really want to zero in on today, and I want you to be able to use the first day that you're using the software and ana analyzing a schedule is the logic trace. What you do for this one is you click the top part of the button to go into the logic trace screen and what this is going to let you do is select any activity in the schedule and pull up a driving logic trace, either to or from that activity or both, which is my favorite. Now the red ones are critical path items. So if I click on any of the red ones and trace forward and backwards, I'm gonna get the critical path. That's easy and you can do that in the scheduling tool. But what I'll do here is I'll click on vendor B, then I'll right click and I'll do trace forward and backward and we'll see what we get. Oh, I see that vendor B is driven by the critical path, but then has taken its own tangent and is not on the critical path itself. That begs the question, should vendor B be the driver for something? Maybe it should be on the critical path. That's something to investigate either in the scheduling tool or where you can see the logic over in the S1 project screen. All right, now that we've looked at that one, let's reset the trace. Let's just pick a different activity at random and see what we get. We'll pick a blue one, phase five, trace forward and backwards. Hmm, same situation. We start in this driving logic path on the critical path. We diverge at phase one. We get through to phase five, but then we're not driving anything either. Maybe that's perfectly okay. This goes from a quantitative assessment of measuring the driving path to a qualitative question 
an assessment of whether phase five should be driving something, or maybe we would have expected this phase one through five precedents to all be on the critical path. That's where we'll need the right people involved to understand this from an engineering perspective and help us understand if the flow of the schedule is accurate to the way that the work will be executed or if there's something missing here. Now, we do know that we have those 11 missing logic items, so we probably in real life would fix those up before we even started doing these. Oh, and one more thing on this screen, publish, and you can publish the results of all of these checks to Excel, very similar to the analyst report that we run on S2 Diagnostics. I really do like the logic trace as it uh, leans out your view of the schedule uh, to the paths that really matter. The ones leading to your project's key milestones and deliverables. And remember, you're not just investigating what's on those paths. Keep your team focused on what may be missing from those driving paths as well and adjust the schedule if needed. Finally today, we're on to forensics to talk about change analysis. For forensics, we're going to go back over to the S1 project screen because for forensic project comparisons, we need more than one project open. In fact, you can compare any number of projects. We're gonna keep it really simple today and compare an unstatus schedule with the first update. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna right click on the schedule that I have open and I'm going to go to New Snapshot, select my scheduling tool, and navigate to that next one, one of these sample projects. Uh, here we go. And we'll do the one month update. And we can either import all projects or I can right click on that second one and import snapshot. Now there's other ways to arrange files when you go into forensics. You don't have to be quite so organized here. However, you'll save a few steps if you do what I did and go from oldest to newest on down the list. So you would have your baseline, then your one month, two month, three month, or whatever sequence you want. But oldest to newest usually works best. You can change your mind later on if you didn't load them that way, but you'll save a few steps if you follow this guidance. Over to the Forensics tab. And already it's made comparisons in a number of different categories. And I'll show you what I mean here. It says Activity Status 5. Let's click on that. It means five total activities have had their status changed from the baseline to the first month. The good news is they all started as planned, though at least the ones that changed did, and they've all gone to complete or in progress. I don't see any here that went from complete to planned or in progress to planned, which would be things to keep an eye on. Original duration, two. If you don't remember changing any original durations, it would be good to go out here and see that these two activities had this duration in this column where it says initial plan, and then this new duration where it says one month update. And that's true for all these different checks that it did. Um, I'm looking for things like um, float changes, critical path changes, things that suggest that the schedule may have changed structurally beyond what I expected to be applied which in this case is status. Let's go to critical. This will show us activities that are jumping on or off the critical path. This first one was critical in the baseline and it's no longer critical. And these eight were not on the critical path and now as a result of the first month of status, they are. If that's unexpected, these are good ones to go in and take a look at and see what's going on and see what can be done if you didn't expect them to, to be on the critical path. And as you can see, a whole bunch of different categories here. Now there's a lot of different uses for forensics. It's not just for checking status updates, but it never hurts on a status update to come out here and see what's going on. Another great time to do this is when any change management activity has taken place on the project. And like before, publish, current report,
And in just a few clicks and in a few seconds here, we will have an Excel document that has all those changes listed from all those different categories that we looked at in Acumen, except we're looking at them in an Excel report, which like the other reports we ran today are completely separate and detached from Acumen. They can be put out on, on SharePoint or on a server or attached to an email and sent to somebody who doesn't have Acumen and is not going to use Acumen but they need to know the information so that you can work with them to improve the quality of the schedule. Remember, forensics can be used in many situations, from showing the revisions as a result of weekly or monthly schedule updates, or in situations where a change of scope has been implemented and you want to assure that the new scope is accurately depicted and that there were no unintended consequences or collateral damage to other areas of the schedule not affected by the scope change. So as you get started with Dell Tech Acumen Fuse, remember these key capabilities. Importing and diagnosing, we did that first. Deep logic checks, including those driving paths, we did that second. And change monitoring and management with forensics, we did that last. If you have any questions about the software itself, training, or anything else, I'll put some resources and contact information up on the screen that you can use to learn more. Thank you, and keep us updated as you work with the software.